Number 78. What are the concentrations of PCL5, PCL3, and Cl2 in an equilibrium mixture produced by the decomposition of a sample of pure PCL5 with the concentration of PCL5 being 2.00 molarity? And then they give us this equation with the KC value. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write, write the equation a little bit bigger just so that we can work with it. So we got PCL5, and that's a gas. This is coming to equilibrium. With PCL3, sorry for my voice. I am a little bit under the weather, but we got to get these videos out. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure that this is balanced. I'm just scanning this equation. Looks balanced to me. You could always pause the video if you need just to practice balancing your equations. But this looks pretty good to me. And now let's see. Uh, we want to know what the concentrations of PCL5, PCL3, and Cl2 are. And they said that we were decomposing a pure sample of PCL5. If they're saying that a sample is pure, that means that that's the only thing that's there. And they're telling us that, you know, the PCL5 concentration was 2.00 molarity. Now we have to read in between the lines, guys. We want to find out the equilibrium concentrations... And we started with a pure sample of PCL5 that was 2 molarity. Would you say that this number is an initial value or an equilibrium value? Yeah, it's an initial value, right? Now, just you just got to use that reading comp, okay? So once you assume that this is initial and not an equilibrium value or a start value, we have to use our ice table. So as soon as they give me a start value and I'm in the equilibrium chapter, I go straight to an ice table. I say I, C, E. Now some teachers or professors might do a rice table. R stands for the balanced reaction, R for reaction, but less letters, the better. <laughs> so I, I don't use rice, I use ice. So I in ice stands for initial. All of the initial concentrations going in here. Now, they gave me a KC value, so I have to use concentration. Um, and they gave me a concentration here, right? Molarity is concentration. And this PCL5, 2 molarity, that's the initial concentration. So that goes right here, 2.00. I don't like to put in the units in my ice table. It just kind of gets a little crazy. So I just make sure that I have the right units and then I don't write them in my table. Now the question is, what are the initial concentrations for PCL3 and Cl2? Well, they said that we had a pure sample, which means that we only had PCL5. So did we have any PCL3 or Cl2 to start with? No. So I'm just going to say I had none of this and none of this, 0 and 0. Next line is the C. C stands for change. Now, this is saying, where are we going to get to equilibrium? We'll always go to your zero amounts. Remember, if you're starting from nothing, you could only go up from there, right? No such thing as negative molarities and negative pressure values. So I know that the products have to be increasing, right? The products have to be increasing and the reactants have to be decreasing. So if that's the case, I know that my change has to be a plus value for the PCL3, and for the Cl2, it has to be plus. Coming over here, this has to be dropping, so this would be minus. But now, what is the values that go here? Well, we don't know how much they're changing. That's what we're trying to figure out, so we're going to label that as x. But just make sure that you go by your coefficients. That's why it's super important to know that this is a balanced equation. But all of them have a 1 in front of them. So this would be minus 1x, and this would be plus 1x and plus 1x, but, you know, with the 1s, we could just say this is minus x, plus x, and plus x. Last but not least is E, which stands for equilibrium. Equilibrium is where you're going to be once your initial changes. So basically, your equilibrium line is just your I and your C combined. So you started with 2 minus x equilibrium, 
would be 2.0 minus x. And for your products, it would be 0 plus x, which is just x, and 0 plus x, which is just x. Now we're ready to use all of our equilibrium values to plug in for our KC expression. We know what that one is, right? It's this. Kc is just equal to the concentration of the products divided by the reactants raised to the coefficients. And remember, only gases and aqueous are allowed. But in this case, we have only gases, so all these are going to be in the Kc expression. So let's just write out our expression for here. Kc would equal, we have two products divided by one reactant, right? So we got concentration, ooh, concentration of... PCL3, and that's raised to the first because there was only a 1 as the coefficient. So you could raise it to the first, but anything raised to the first is itself. Times by Cl2, raised to the first, and then divided by uh, the PCL5, that's also raised to the first. So we are good to go, right? We know that for both of these, these are both x values, so I'm going to plug in x for both of them. We know that this is 2.0 minus x, and the Kc that they gave us was 0 0.0211. Okay, so let's plug it in. And what I might do, actually, yeah, we'll plug it in here and then we'll work on this side when we do the math. So 0.211 equals, looks like we have x times by x, right? And this is all divided by 2.00 minus x. Okay. Now remember, to make it easy for ourselves, right, x times x is just the same as x squared. So I can get rid of one of them and just say that I have x squared, and that would be the same thing. Now, some of you might be seeing where we're going with this. We have an x squared value and we have an x value. That sounds like the quadratic to me, but we have to make sure that we have to do the quadratic formula and we can't neglect this change. That all comes down to the Kc value. This Kc is not really small. Technically, one of the rules of neglecting the x and making it easy for ourselves is if your Kc value was times 10 to the negative fifth or less. So times 10 to the negative sixth, times 10 to the negative seventh. But if I just uh, put this into scientific notation with two placements, this would be 1.22 times 10 to the negative second. This is not low enough for me to neglect the x value. So therefore, I got to do it. I got to do the quadratic. It's going to stink, but we have to do it. So this will be a little bit quick. Now, for right now, all we have to do is we have to cross multiply because remember, we have to get all of our values on one side. So this would be 0 0.0211 times the 2.00 minus x equals x squared. <clears throat> so now we're just going to distribute, right? This has to get distributed. You got to be fair. So let's do this math. So 0 0.0211 times 2.00. I get 0 0.0422 minus 0.0211x, and that equals x squared. So now in order to do the quadratic, we have to bring over the x to this value, or you could bring both of these over to the other side. If you want, because we'd like to keep x squared as being a positive, let's just bring these other two on over. So what you would do is you would add the 0.0211x, and you would minus the 0422. So now I'm going to write it up here. So what's our final uh, quadratic equation set up? We have x squared plus 0.0211x. That's this part. 
That's why this cancels out. And then we have a minus 0 0.0422. And remember, this all equals 0. So that's how we get rid of this. Now we're ready for our quadratic equation. We have to list what our a, b, and c value is. So the a value is, remember, always the number in front of the x squared. There was nothing here, so that means that there was 1. So our a value is 1. The b value is whatever is in front of the x value. That's this, so 0 0.0211. And the C value, if I just scooch this over, the C value is the remaining number that's left over, but you have to keep into consideration that, you know, whether it's a negative or a positive. In this case, the previous sign was a positive, so that's why this number is positive. But here it's a negative, so the C would be a negative 0 0.0422. Okay, now... Let's post up the quadratic equation, right? We're still trying to solve for x. So x equals, this one is crazy, long division sign. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in our a, b, and c values into this equation. So let's see. We have negative b, so that's this guy, so negative 0 0.0211 plus or minus the square root of b squared. b was 0 0.0211, so that's squared. Maybe I can move this a little bit over. And let's see if I can extend this a little bit. Perfect. Minus 4. The a was 1 because it's times 4ac, so times 1 times c, which is this value. So negative 0 0.0422, close that up. And this is all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. Okay, so let's clean this up. Let's do the uh, thing under the... the uh, the square root, so I got negative 0 0.0211 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, can I do that all in one shot? I think I can, 0 0.0211 squared plus, well, actually, a negative times a negative is a positive, so I'll just say 4 times 0 0.02. 0.422, and then this number plus that number, right? Yep, that makes sense. So this should be basically 0 0.16925, and this is all divided by 2, right? 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, let's do this square root now. So I'm going to square root that. And I just want to I just want to double check on that because if I if I accidentally make a mistake everything is going to be all messed up, right? So I'm just going to just double 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 check and I do get that answer. Okay. So we're good. So now square root that. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this, and I did the square root. That is the same thing as 0 0.41139. Okay, so now we have a choice here, and maybe what I can do is I'm going to just, if you need, pause the video, because I'm going to get rid of all of this, all right, because we're still going with the quadratic equation, so bye-bye. And for here, at this stage of the game, you have two choices. You have an x value that is negative 0 0.0211 plus that value, 
divided by 2. And you have an x value of being negative 0 0.0211 minus 0 0.41139, all divided by 2. Right, because this plus or minus means that we could have two choices. Now the thing is, is that remember, an x value can only be positive. Which one of these gives us the positive answer? It's this one, right? This top part would give me a negative value, and a negative number divided by 2 is negative. So this I'm not even going to worry about. This is not the right answer. This is the right answer. So let's see. If we keep going with this, this would basically be negative 0 0.0211 plus 0 0.41139. I get basically 0 0.39029 divided by 2. And finally, we get an x value of 0 0.1. Nine, five. I'm going to round this because finally we round we, we got an x value, three sig figs, so that is my x value. Now, some of you might have a quadratic uh, equation program in your calculator, which will basically do all this math for you. All you have to do is plug in the a, b, and c value, so, you know, that's fair game. So, if you have that program, use it to your advantage. I just wanted to show you guys you know, for all those that don't have the program, that this is how you would do the math. But the same thing, if you guys have the program, it would show you both answers. Just always pick the positive one, okay? All right. So now we know that we have an x value of 0.195. They wanted to know what the concentrations of all of these were at equilibrium. So I have to go back to the E line. So let's see. Maybe I will get rid of this, and I'm just going to put it up here. So we have PCL5, we have PCL3, and we have CL2. These are very weird. Beautiful. Okay. So for PCL3 and CL2, they were both X values. So the X that we found out was their equilibrium concentration. So it's both 195, 0.195 for each one of them. Now for the PCL5, it has to be 2.00 minus X. So we just have to quickly do that. 2.00 minus 0 0.195. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just pull this one a little bit back. And there we go. 2 minus 0 0.195 is 1.805, but if you round it, it would be 1.81. And there you go. These are all of your equilibrium uh, concentrations. So for PCL5, it's 1.81. For PCL3, it's the 0.195. And then for the PCL2, it's also the 0.195, and we are done. This one was crazy, guys. What do you think? Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for tuning into the video, and I hope you guys learned from it. Let me know in the comments. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. We're almost at 15,000 subscribers, which is crazy. So that's all because of you guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.